in 83 we decided to start a business. It came out of Katie's wanting to have a bicycle repair shop. And it actually turned into a little flea market place. We started in 208, uh, everything shop, a chachki place. Uh, uh, we sell uh, what nobody wants, uh, they throw out, we fix it, we sell it for very little. We're going to be recycling, we're going to be saving stuff from the dump. We're going to use our creativity, our imagination, our love for things that are not wanted, for ugly things, and we're going to make them beautiful. We're going to provide a service for people that have very little money. We, are, we were then in an inner city, same place, but it has transformed. In an inner city place where people, uh, some people were in very desperate places, you know. And we wanted to also help people come out of this uh, desire for acquisition by providing possibility for cheap acquisition, cost a little money, and then invite them to a different community experience in the stores, you know, because we were creating community. This was the objective, really, to use the the, the work situations as a new stage, a new gestalt to work on our relationships, on the issues of hierarchy, on the issues of collaboration, on the issues of learning to deeply listen to what is meant, not to what is necessarily said or heard, but meant. So all of our businesses were at this objective. And this objecti objective of creating places where people could feel a different contact kind, where people would be treated with love, with respect, if they came with one cent or if they came with two hundred dollars. This grew into Everything Goes, Everything Goes Incorporated, which is a business that now grosses about four hundred thousand dollars a year. And the purpose of it is not to uh, make profits, but to cover the costs. All of our projects have this in mind, cover the people that work there. Because part of the notion was also, we need to provide for income for the people that come and join us, and we want very low-tech uh, business that anybody can join. Because it's not about, I am smart or I, you know. We didn't want to be in the in the rat race, we didn't want to be swallowed up by success. We wanted to experiment with lots of things. And we understood the pitfalls of making a lot of money and then being in that. Some communities have had that problem or many other pitfalls, yeah? The, the money to do everything we have done comes from the core group. So some of, the, of, of us worked outside in the core group and we pooled all of our resources and some of us stayed at home and made community or made the process we're more so for many years uh, from 1979 until 1986 i worked full time and i would uh, when we moved to staten island i would commute and i would be uh, monday to friday nine to five with commu additional commute time there and uh, so i would miss a lot of process here but I was providing a lot of the money and I would stay in contact over telephone and I would be consulted, you know, and stuff. But and then on the, in the nights I would join in the process. Uh, and Susan did that too and yeah, Ellen did that too and Julie did that too. So out of all the monies, at first, 100% of the income came from core group monies, joined. Then, then uh, the, another revenue stream came, which was from people that lived with us, but were not core group, they were pooling income. And what um, we created this number, which was the share of the expenses. So we added up what it cost to run the household, and we said each of us costs whatever, 350, 400. Uh, and then the people that lived with us that weren't part of core group would pay this money. And they worked also outside, and they joined community when they were home, weekends, nights, etc. So this was the second stream. Then in 83, out of core group money, 
we started, we bought a building to start a store and all the money is again out of core group. All the infrastructure has been bought with core group money. And the monies that non-core group people provide and the work they provide really goes to cover expenses. There are no profits. So the Ghana's, the core group uh, investment in infrastructure does not get any returns. That's never the point. But it does appreciate in value. This is true. So core group owns the properties and it appreciates in value. Sometimes it depreciates in value, like in the current market structure. We have mostly just real estate. And because again, we are into covering costs. We are not into accumulating a lot of liquid assets, but investing the cash into things that are useful. Yeah. Okay. So up to 83, we have the core group income stream. We have, uh, let's call it resident income stream. And then from 83 on, we start having the stores income stream. And slowly it moves from 100% core group to 80% uh, core group, 20% residents to 60% uh, core group, 20% uh, residents, 20% uh, stores. So we have three revenue streams. Uh